Hello viewers, welcome to MOOC's online course on visual perception and art, a survey across the culture. This is the 18th lecture. This one and the next lecture that is lecture number 19. In these two lectures we will be dealing with the idea of abstraction in art and how abstract art appears as a major problematic issue with regard to our visual perception. Now, though many of you might be knowing about it, but still for the sake of introducing the subject, quickly let me give you a definition of what is abstract art. Now, anything that is difficult in art may not be abstract, because there is a misconception amongst the common people that when an art ceases to be immediately and very easily understandable, then it tends to be abstract. Now, if the term or the meaning of abstraction tends to replace the term like uh, obscurity, this is completely wrong abstraction has got nothing to do with obscurity. Abstract art or abstraction is as clearly understandable as realistic art or realistic representation. Yes, representation is the issue here. Whereas, in most of the other paintings, no matter how stylized, how distorted, how alternative, how different they are, most of the artworks tend to represent something. In their art, it is not difficult to identify, okay, this is a glass, this is an object, this is a tree, this is a landscape, whatever. In abstract art, and I am talking about pure abstract art, like the one that you see on the title page here, there is no chance of identifying anything. And this is where it uh, became very problematic and difficult for people to understand that if a painting is not representing anything, if we are not able to identify any element in the painting, then what is the whole purpose of this painting? We will come to that later regarding the purpose of abstract paintings, but right now we are talking about the look, appearance and the basic character of abstraction. The very basic character of abstract painting or abstract sculpture or abstract art in general is the denial of any representation. The idea is not to represent anything and rather to get rid of any kind of references to the real world, to get rid of any representation of the real world, to get rid of any sign or any identification marks that help us to read the painting and locate the objects, no. It actually provides us with certain pictorial, painterly experiences, visual experiences where nothing is represented, but there is a whole lot to feel, to understand, to even interpret. And obviously, our normal process of visual perception is not always ready to face or encounter this kind of artworks. So, abstract art jeopardizes our normative visual perception. More often than not, abstract art defies any form of representation. Hence, abstract art is also known as non-representational art. Often, abstract art is absolutely beyond any recognition. Hence, abstract art is also known as non-referential art. Apparently, abstract art carries no reference to the real visual world or any object around. Though, there might be a few uh, movements in abstract art, 
there might be a few artists uh, belonging to the realm of abstract art who begins their process of abstraction from known objects, from recognizable objects, but many do not. Yet, most of the examples of abstract art are deeply rooted and secretly connected to the visual, visual perception we experience daily. So, it is highly possible that for many abstract artists, the process has to be started from the visually known and recognizable world. And one of the great exa greatest examples of this kind is Piet Mondrian. And because uh, he has often uh, begun from a very recognizable form like a tree here. As you can see in these three paintings, the first one on the left hand upper side, you can see the, the, the blue tree, a blue composition in tree the form is pretty close to how we visually perceive. I mean it is very recognizable. Then he moves on to the one on the right hand side and comes down to the third painting that is below. You can see a gradual progression from the known form to an unknown form, from a recognizable form to an unrecognizable painting or a composition. Now, this progression happens because the artist begins to drop slowly and gradually drop all the recognizing elements. Abstract art or abstraction in visual art can also be understood as a tendency. There are many abstract artists for whom abstraction is not a hardcore agenda. We will see works by such artists for whom abstract they begin with abstraction, they end in abstraction. But for many other artists it is possible that it is a matter of tendency, but for us it is very important, but even if it is a matter of tendency these artists like the one that you are looking at here, they do produce certain paintings where our visual perception needs to adjust, our visual perception needs to continuously negotiate this new form of representation which is abstraction. So, a tendency to reduce the recognized visual forms into basic fundamental units like line, color, shapes etcetera can be seen in the works of many artists. For example, this one. So, when you look at this painting, you can clearly see that this painting has foregone and discarded right at the beginning any probability of any recognition. Straight away it moves into the realm of abstraction, it plays with various shapes and colors, it places them not to create a visibly recognizable form, but to create a pictorial uh, arrangement or composition which by its very nature is completely abstract. So, if our brain tries to make a sense of that kind of abstraction, pure abstraction like the one that we just saw is going to be very, very frustrated. It is a frustrating experience for a brain when it is trying to make a realistic sense of abstraction and it cannot, because in that case we need to tell our brain no, that painting does not expect any realistic interpretation. What you see is what that painting is all about. But in a sculpture like this by Barakusi, though the form is pretty abstract in that sense, but what he uh, is trying to convey through this sculpture and since we know about the process through which he has gone to reach a stage like this. We know that Prakusi is trying to convey a sense of light that he observes in birds. So, basically this sculpture is about a bird in flight, but what you see is neither bird flapping its wings nor a very realistic representation of a bird in flight, 
but you see a form, a shape that aspires to go up, move up and it is this sense of direction and movement inherent in the abstract form is what Brakusi associates with the realistic experience of bird in flight. So, this is a probability that you have felt or seen something in real life, then you capture the essence of that experience and you express that experience once again through your art, but not going back to the representational aspect again. You do not show that bird again, but you show the flight or at least make the viewers feel the flight. You cannot even show the flight. How can you show flight? You cannot. If you say that yes, I can show the flight, but actually you have to show the bird. But when Brancuse decides not to show the bird, but yet to show the flight, so he takes recourse uh, to this kind of abstract forms. Similarly, when you look at this sculpture by Barbara Hepworth, where uh, she is dealing with abstract shapes and forms, it is once again highly possible that she derived this idea from some organic world, from organic visual experiences, from organic forms. But what we see here in this ultimate uh, stage of the sculpture is not even in its faintest way there is no association with the real world, it is all about the rhythm, shape, feel, movement, surface and the tactile quality of the sculpture itself. One more sculpture by Barbara Hepworth. Similarly, because what uh, she is trying to say is that this, uh, because there is a title and the title reads figure for landscape. Now, both these things figure and landscape are real entities in our real life. But what exactly she means when she puts this title? Does she want us to read a figure here, which is not completely impossible? I would say as far as this sculpture is concerned, if one tries, one can read the faint form of a figure. But at the same time, when she says that it is a figure for landscape, in a way, this figure is a homage to landscape. So, it means that we need to also feel a natural space embodied by these two uh, not figures, but impressions of figures. Now, this whole idea that you have a faint impression of figure, which is supposedly embodying a sense of landscape, it is such a conceptual idea that if you show it uh, through some literal depiction, it might look very flimsy and too literal and too light hearted. But to make it, to give it a very profound visual statement, probably abstraction uh, is the best method or the best language. But our visual perception needs to be informed about this possibility that how abstraction can become a vehicle of such ideas. Now, in other words, abstraction makes us see things in basic units as a raw file in a state preceding any moment of recognition. In fact, when you look at abstract paintings, I do not know if it happens to you, but it happens to most of us that hardly we can check the temptation of locating, seeing quote unquote and identifying objects even when in that painting there is no such thing intended. You cannot help it because this is how our brain or our visual perception is tuned. It always try, it always tries to identify, it always tries to recognize, it always tries to give an abstraction an identity, a kind of tangible reality. And this is what makes the whole experience of abstract art little problematic for us because and also particularly for the sculptors and painters who work uh, abstract arts because 
they really speaking they want the viewers to enjoy that abstraction they don't want us to uh, begin the process of recognition then on the other hand a fairly recognizable picture may have a dominant abstract value like this chinese landscape when you look at this painting very carefully of course you can find out all the natural shapes forms rocks hills even the presence of a very simple hut or an architectural framework over there etc so on and so forth but when you look at the painting overall from a distance uh, what uh, you are drawn to is not really those details of objects in nature and space but the overall quality of abstraction even for that matter in this beautiful watercolor drawing by Vinod Bihari Mukherjee you can actually though you can see the details of a Benares Ghat the steps leading to the uh, river then all those makeshift kind of shades and arrangements and the crowd and the architecture behind yet what dominates your attention what actually captures your attention is not this very very suggestive details but the overall presence of abstract elements in this case it is line diagonal lines vertical lines horizontal lines various kinds of lines creating an or linear orchestration creating a kind of visual music and you enjoy that at the same time you are supposed to enjoy that otherwise as far as the a depiction of a Benares uh, um, is concerned uh, a Benares Ghat is concerned actually it does not make much sense it is a fairly a simple drawing but the moment you begin to enjoy the abstraction that is an inherent part of the construction of this painting then you actually begin to enjoy the painting as well similarly in a painting like this despite all the recognizable elements what when you learn to look at a painting what you tend to enjoy is the abstract quality of the brush marks of the directions of the brush mark of the space division even the small buildings and architectures that are visible at the background can be interpreted as abstract shapes of colors and forms and in fact it is up to us to steer our visual perception away from its constant habit of recognizing and identifying forms to a different habit of experiencing this kind of visual abstractions like this one here of course there is a possibility of looking at abstraction more directly in terms of the fragments of the bodies and the dresses but at the same time it is highly possible and it is perfectly okay if you look at this painting or this collage also in terms of fragmented abstract units of shapes and colors in fact there are many such paintings in the world created by Indian artists as well as Western artists where there is uh, I won't say ambiguity but an ambivalence because the language method and the style of the painting tend to address both abstraction as well as recognition so abstract pictorial units are not always entirely conceptual they are part of our visual perception but less recognized or not identified at all now this is to draw your attention to the fact that abstraction itself is not entirely a pictorial innovation I'm sure we have all had these experiences of noticing abstraction in our real life when everything that we come across in our real life visually speaking 
may not be always recognizable. So the chance of encountering abstraction of real life may not be, it may be less, yet the possibility makes it uh, possible for us to connect real life and abstract painting. For example, this painting. Now, so, if we cannot perceive this abstraction in the real visual life, uh, artists can perceive that and with the help of their visionary capacity, technical skills and experiences they can actually express that. So, we recognize that or not abstraction or the experience of abstract visual elements are part of our natural visual experiences. Artists they once again begin to rely on the fundamental visual components like colors, shapes and composition so much that though their primary intention is to depict the real nature, the real figure, the real object, but they end up making a painting which is pretty abstract like this one. Though we have used this same painting in one of our previous lectures to illustrate the idea of alternative realism, but we can use the same painting here also to illustrate the idea of the tendency towards abstraction, though this painting may not be a complete abstraction as such. Now, talking about abstraction in real life, real nature, these are the kind of encounters that we have day in our daily life, no doubt about that. Even when you are going very fast through a very busy street in a very busy city and when it is raining all around, what you can see through the rain drenched car windows or bus windows or train windows, glass windows I am talking about is very close to something like this. So, very known familiar visual objects, running cars, walking people the shops and everything, they get blurred, they turn into abstract shapes and colors and it is in these moments that in real life too, we can actually and we do experience abstraction. So, when you look at a painting like this, then it is not uh, surprising if you recall these memories of abstraction that we go through in our real life. Now, uh, visual and other sensory experiences of a busy city like Benares can certainly lead to this kind of abstraction on the one hand and you also have painters painting nature or experiences of nature that has stayed back in their memory like a nostalgia like this painting by Ganesh Halui, where he keeps on recalling and remembering his past, the idyllic natural landscape in which he grew up and he misses that and it is this memory coupled with those faint images of the landscape that he has left behind many many years back is a wonderful kind of material to create abstract painting and that is why this very well known artist called Ganesh Halvi keeps on doing more and more such abstract paintings which actually have a deep rooted connection to the land that he has lost, that he had to leave behind due to partition in 1947. So, a real life experience like this of loss of memory of nostalgia can lead to this beautiful abstraction as demonstrated by these painters. And coming back to once again Piet Mondrian, these diagram will give you a clue that how he would progress from a real familiar recognizable visual form to a completely unrecognizable abstract visual composition. You look at this uh, slide very carefully and find out this progression yourself 
and if possible you can yourself carry out an experiment. I mean you begin with a particular object and try to take it to an abstract form and see how you progress. And that will help you to experience this uh, process um, of uh, reaching an abstract form from a real form to some extent the way Piet Mondrian experienced. So finally Mondrian would arrive at this kind of experiences, this kind of compositions. And it became so popular, so well accepted that Mondrian's abstract paintings became a very much sought after design inspiration for the designers all over the world, whether somebody is designing shoe or a building or you have this Mondrian cake it can be any object. So, it is very interesting also to study that on the one hand we are trying to say that abstraction or abstract art challenges our visual perception and on the other hand the designers, designers who design product, designers who design architectures the designers and product designers and architects and accessory designers, designers of various kinds found Mondrian's version of abstraction very handy, very useful to create some stunning design products. For them it was not a challenge to visual perception, but rather a potential uh, design possibility in the world of commercial designs. In fact, in the western world abstraction emerged as a fashion statement to a great extent till today. It is a much sought after, much loved and much explored and experimented kind of visual language in the fashion world. And finally, you may also come across abstract paintings whose ideas are rooted not in the processing from the familiar to unfamiliar, not in the play of pure geometry and shapes and forms, but in a certain notion of spiritualism. So, when you look at these paintings by the famous Indian painter Raza you can see that how he is using abstraction to convey a spiritual concept or a spiritual idea like this one. And it is a very Indian concept that he explored, he explored the idea of Bindu for example. And for him Bindu has to have an abstract entity pictorial speaking, otherwise it would not be able to convey the real essence, the philosophical essence that this idea vis a vis Indian philosophy contain. So, the Raza's abstraction has to be read not just by altering our visual perception, but also by our knowledge of certain aspects of Indian philosophy and Indian spiritual history like this one. In fact, for many on a lighter note abstraction like fashion statement is also a modernist statement. It has got no real substance, because till a point in the history of modern art there was a whole school or more than one school which never took abstract art seriously. For them it was a rather easy way to get an entry into modern art, a kind of trendy thing to do. So, in this cartoon that you are looking at, this is how a particular artist called David is being introduced 
to a couple who might have seen him before when David was very young, but David has changed, his appearance has changed completely because he is into modern art now. So, modern art uh, has not only gave birth to abstraction, but it also allowed abstract art to have various kinds of roots, associations, meanings and purposes. So, more of these purposes, meanings and associations will be studied in our next, next lecture. Thank you.